Hello. I'm here with Rhythm from Cubix and Madhul from 3CDN. And we are going to be talking about building India's first billion dollar integration company. Gentlemen, your work is amazing. You've gotten recognition on the regional and global scale. You've won innovation and innovate APAC awards. Is the market for a billion dollar integration firm or company to exist in India? Is that there? Let's start there. Rhythm. Uh, I think it's not there right now, but we have to start right now to build it in the next three years. Uh, the market definitely is there, but uh, yes, lots of work to do. Brother, next three years? Well, well, I'm cynically optimistic about uh, having a billion dollar company coming from India. But to make that happen, the biggest challenge is we're not seeing money coming into the AV industry in India. If you want companies to grow, it's important they're getting investments from the right channels to hire more people and expand. The thought process is still very local with most of the systems integrator when they approach work. Market is not there, it is going to grow. Uh, India offers probably the potential where you have the, the region as well as the, the skill set uh, in, in, in the volume that you would want for. Uh, which can really complement the thought or complete the equation towards becoming a billion dollar company. Uh, but, but the point here is I don't see the money coming into the India space from channels which are venture capitalists or private equities. It's not happening. Okay, a lot to unpack. Let's start with to be a big fish, you need a big pond, right? How are we going to grow this pond? How are we going to start growing the market? You're talking about VC funding coming into AV. Do you think that that's the route to go down, that integration firms in India need capital, they need funding to expand? Or is there stuff that needs to be done on the end user side in terms of, hey, there's a lot more that can be done, there's a lot more that we can offer, but you need to start no, no, putting no. the cash up. Let's, let's look at how the valuations are arrived at. You know, Valuations, uh, I mean, your company is valued if somebody is ready to invest some money at that value. So first things first, we need somebody to come and value the company, which means I can only say the company is billion dollar when somebody says, okay, fine, I'm mm -hmm. going to buy 10% of that mm -hmm. at that valuation. Mm -hmm. So that's the first things first. Now, why I don't think it's coming into this business is because we have very linear revenues. We don't mm -hmm. have non-linear predictable revenues like, uh, you know, a, a, a taxi company or, 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 or something like that, you know. So, uh, so we need to build non-linear revenues. We need to look outside the Indian market. We need to capitalize on our manpower mm -hmm. and sell services outside the country. Then inside the country while waiting for the domestic market to grow. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's a it's a three to a five year plan to be a sustainable billion dollar company. Mm -hmm. And you need so many things for that. You need people, you need trainings, you know. Okay. Let's, before we jump on to the non-linear, right? Do you think the linear has been exhausted? Because I know that there are firms, integration firms in India that are so overbooked that they're turning down work. Like the work is there, it, it's just we can't physically do it because we can't scale yeah. as quickly. There's a little bit of the, hey, we need funding to get that scale, but there's also short-term things that you can do before you start going for venture capitalists and like series A, series B, series C funding. What do you think, brother? Do we need to like get that extra work that's piling up sorted first and then grow into non-linear? Well, there is a limited capacity that our colleagues from the AV space offer in India. They have limited number of offices, limited number of people, and therefore they're turning down the job that is coming their way. The, the, the critical part here is AV industry, in my opinion, is the most exciting uh, services industry in the fit-out space. It offers significant margins, which are still not consistent from project to project. It is one of the fastest growing space, if you look at it a package point of view. The, the percentage contribution of AV towards the overall fit-out package is increasing year by year. And these are some of the really strong data points for investors to look at our industry seriously. The, the, the thought here is, it's not just a point where the AV systems integrators in India 
are falling short of people or falling short of uh, offices to support it. There's a dearth of talent also. And, and that's one of the key bottlenecks for us to kind of look at towards them being able to say, yes, I'm happy to take project in South, West, North, East, all at the same time. It's becoming really difficult for them from that point of view. So, so we are looking at a point where in the next coming years, the, the, the emergence of billion dollar systems integrator is going to happen by influx of money and growth of talent uh, in our, in our uh, industry. And that's, uh, that's, that's going to be an uphill climb. Rhythm, we always default to this, especially in Asia Pacific and in India, to a certain extent, there's that musical chairs, <laughs> you know, talent hops from A to B to C and then returns back to A. What are we going to do to well, expand there, that pool, get new people in? I mean, there is a vacuum of uh, talent, you know, we mm. need See, first things, AV is not a recognized industry even now. You know, mm. when you're filling a form on the internet and you want to find AV, it's not there. It's a very small industry represented by very small people, but doing decently big numbers. Mm. Uh, I think we have to, as a community, uh, go and hire new people every year, mm. fresh out of colleges, and, you know, add more talent pool. Uh, do more trainings and all that but more importantly go and pick up fresh talent now right now actually because of uh, lucrative margins and everything everybody has a lot of money you know so every big integrator wants to go and hire a ready-made talent mm -hmm. nobody wants to take the pain to build yeah. you know to, to to make their own talent so the smaller guys bring in substandard manpower from small colleges at cheap prices and then uh, somehow they just grow and just because they have two three years of av experience they get picked up by a big guy and then those guys are were not that good but fine you know we just live with that yeah it's 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 so strange to hear you guys talk about dearth of talent when we're talking about india literally there is talent everywhere highly educated workforce lot of really good skills that do transfer over Programming in particular yeah. is something you can start taking people from IT. Are you seeing that being done? No, IT or? offers uh, uh, much bigger uh, packages, much better future, much bigger companies. Uh, that's the first preference. We are still not the first preference of uh, a good college graduate. You know, we are the second. You know, because our names are not big. We are not mm. the Infosys, the Tatas mm. of the of the world. You know, we are just a small uh, pond. So, <laughs> Rodol, you said it's the most exciting fit out component that's there right now. Do you think that's not going to pull people in or what's well, where's the that, that roadblock? Well, well, the conundrum to attract talent is not just limited to AV. Even the IT guys are struggling right now, mm. right? With more and more companies coming into India, they are finding it increasingly difficult to attract talent. In fact, the, the situation at this moment is so uh, difficult where you are have after the great resignation, which happened a year and a half back, right now we are looking at a second version of great resignation where as you're asking people to come back to offices, they are saying that, hey, we have an option where we can work from home with a new company and therefore we don't want to work with you anymore. Mm -hmm. So, so the, 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 the resource challenge is there, even though India is a, such a big pool of IT and uh, software talent, which will be important for AV, uh, but, but uh, we will have to wait for some more time where, where we kind of uh, are able to create a pool of talent. And with this AV-IT convergence, where AV is going to be more software than network, uh, we should be in a position to have people joining us. And lastly, let's jump on to that non-linear revenue component, right? You can make a billion by just selling product, installing it, but that's the hard way of doing it. The companies that are already billion dollar integrators, they have a very big managed services component to them. They have kind of that as a service thing baked into their offering and that's what they use to retain. That's what they use to get the valuation. That's what they use to get funding, to prove they have stable revenues. What's the mar Indian market like when it comes to SLAs, managed services, you know, sticking around with the client and, and helping them once the bet out? It's complete. It's 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 very easy and cheap to hire a resource on site. You can pay anywhere between five hundred to thousand dollars a month, and you have a resource who's going to take care of everything, no matter how big or small uh, your thing is. You can hire maybe two or three, and uh, that's 
you know that there's no meat in that for an integrator the other thing is that uh, since we are a new uh, uh, you know we are we are new we are coming up with newer products newer installs what we try to achieve is support free projects okay. you know we don't want customers to get hooked on to the support i mean we don't want them to need support in the first place okay. i mean the installs are simpler i think the design standard we follow is that it should be very simple it should not need support and that's why we get more and more business from our customers mm -hmm. and i think the way the industry is growing to more integrated products to uh, you know easy stuff like mm -hmm. they want logitech i mean nobody wants to get support mm -hmm. i mean it's it's something they are buying because they badly need it mm -hmm. but uh, they everybody wants to move away like mm -hmm. you see most of the enterprises have moved to something like logitech because they don't they don't want to get into the support game so i don't think that support market is going to grow very much in av i mean it's okay yeah problem well well i've been a big advocate of manageability as a word in the av space manageability is really big in the it space mm. where uptime slas count purely because it affects the business of the company and their customers av slowly is going in that direction and we can't be just box movers or for that matter systems integrator only we need partners to think like it players where they kind of own the 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 responsibility the customer has towards their internal customers which is employees as well as external customers and these are some of the problems that av is solving today so from that that standpoint managed services will be a very important cog in the entire wheel of av systems integrator and and that is going to give them recurring revenue mm. uh, talk about uh, uh, being paid on monthly basis for the number of hours you support for the number of sites that you have uh, committed to you all these factors are going to play a very very important role moving forward and and yeah so so in the it world do you think it's easier for an it integrator to come and talk about as a service subscription models primarily because the stuff that they're selling is already in that thing in that framework right they're selling licenses they need to be renewed monthly yearly so on and so forth and then they're offering kind of like matches in but in the world of av we're kind of selling something this is the upfront investment we're going to install it and then it's just like harder to then pivot them to hey you should retain me on a month to month basis well that is going to change now if you plot what the av guys are doing today to what it guys are doing today and and kind of break it into three parts systems integrator mm. uh, consultant and oem mm. likewise on the three blocks if av is going to be it of today right in in next 3 to 4 years time the the oems and systems integrator are going to behave and work like what it guys are doing today yeah. and and they have a very strong sla attached to what they are doing yes the choice of products the choice of hardware the, the network topology etc are all defined dictated by the end customer mm. not by the consultant mm. so the role of consultant is going to change substantially something that we are trying to prime ourselves towards but but the the ability to give that level of comfort to the client that whenever you walk into a conference room and do a call it's going to happen every time it's going to happen and that that's a commitment that can happen partially by a good design simple design less number of boxes but it requires someone looking at the dashboard on continuous basis to understand that hey the health of my av system is perfectly fine or not you were a bit down on 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 this happening primarily because you're there on the ground you're integrating these these projects and 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 you're not seeing that take up for slas or managed services from your clients what do you think needs to change on end user side or do you think that integrators need to change who no uh, you know so the thing is that uh, it, things are changing on the end user side slowly uh, so if you if you look at tech companies uh, their av decisions are taken by the ceo or by the tech mm -hmm. or it team mm -hmm. you look at other customers who are into different businesses you you know who are not into tech businesses but also by big av you can say banks home appliance manufacturers mm -hmm. and things like that av decisions from their side are taken by the facilities guys or procurement guys mm -hmm. you know so they don't understand all this mm -hmm. now this this the shift to it will happen completely when we say that okay 99% of my boxes are going on to the network so they have to put it in the cio's budget or yeah. into into his purview then we can expect that same level of maturity coming in mm. but right now still i think 40 50% of the market is non tech businesses also buying av and we can't say no to them because you know 
they are yeah. they are also very important. Yes, they, and they are your customers. They are our customers, <laughs> you know. So, so you're putting your hopes on AV over IP. You're saying that once that convergence becomes even bigger, right? Once yes. everything moves to once the thing. Once USB dies. Yeah. <laughs> Enough. <laughs> hey, consumers love USB. They love it, but yeah, they love floppy disks also. They like CDs also. They like Blu-rays also. But you know, enough of that. They like newspapers also, but there's no yeah. more newspapers. So we want to be able to even take a laptop. I mean, everything so, is already connected. Everything is on the network. Why not just... A, a personal thing that I feel needs to happen in order to get our first billion dollar Indian integrator is kind of like get an Indian integrator, right? I covered the market sufficiently well to know that there are still regional powerhouses, powerhouses that are really good in a particular city, a particular state, in a particular vertical, like you mentioned, yeah. right? But if you ask them to start going out of that and competing, right, it's it's like a completely different ball game. They're unable to like Because they don't secure. have leadership, they don't have manpower. You, know, you don't have leadership talent available in the market who can go and lead another vertical. So, you know, whoever has two leaders, three leaders, they are doing it, you know. So if we get that talent, we need, I mean, we could have, we should have, a predecessor should have started building that talent, which they never did. Mm. So now we'll do it. So maybe the next generation of people who will come in will have access to good leaders who can say, okay, fine, you look at education vertical and mm. you're sorted. Yeah. <laughs> now, who do we have? Yeah. Madhu, we that. We've, we've talked about this, not viewing India like a monolith because it's not. But do you think it's possible? Or is, is that the route? Like you've got to get kind of like a collective of people together or you've got to train a collective of people for different verticals in different parts of India. If you look at uh, the systems integrated today, they used to be a couple of million dollars uh, turnover companies uh, in the past. And thank, thanks to the growth in the market, they have become double digit million dollar companies. So the first step for us is to convert, convert double digit to triple digit and then finally look at the billion dollars, right? And when you have one or two Indian companies becoming billion dollar systems integrator, you'll have a lot of triple digit uh, million dollar companies sitting down below. Mm. 100 millions, 200 millions, right? So the market has to grow to that level for us to kind of reach that point. And, and India alone may not offer uh, uh, the size yeah. to kind of become a billion dollar company. The, the ambition of an Indian system integrator has to kind of take them outside of India. Yeah, yeah. If, we, if we look at the billion dollar integrators present in the market right now, they've got a stronghold, but they have a global footprint and it is boosted a lot by managed services, recurring revenue, being able to make sure that you can cleanly show things so that you can get a proper valuation. Um, my last question on the topic would be, can we maybe cheat our way to a billion dollar Indian integrator by getting like four, five, six big integrators to just sit down together and, and become one company? No, no, no M&A? No, no, no. Why is it not going to happen? Uh, see, M&A has happened when, uh, you know, between one weak player and one strong player, mm. you know, uh, two strong players, why would they merge? Mm. They're doing well, they're doing fine, you know, there's no point. Mm. I mean, everybody's pretty happy, so. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and you know you don't need it. Yeah, and, and there's that little part of like you know being your own boss, which yeah. resonates with a lot of people as well. Uh, but a lot of the problems that we talked about could actually be solved by a very strong organization and standards body, um, especially on the training part, especially on getting the education part done, getting the word out, attracting new talent. How? It's a component, but I want to get your thoughts on how important of a component it is to actually uplifting not just a, not just an integration company to a billion dollar valuation, but the Indian AV industry as a whole. But you're talking about what I believe strongly in process is the product. If you focus on process, the outcomes will happen. And it's extremely important for us to attract youth, mm. attract kids coming out of college, tell them that, hey, this is the space which offers a solid future for you. And it's not just the amount of money you make, but the kind of career options you'll have as a consequence are going to be comparable to what IT offers. And that's, that's one of the uphill tasks for all of us. And, and honestly, this is not a story limited to India. The, the ability to attract youth is a common problem across the world. And, and that's, that's one of the key elements towards uh, where our industry globally would be at. Yeah, definitely. Gentlemen, thank you so much for your time. And 
we will pick this conversation up three years down the road, hopefully at another ISA. <laughs> Thank you. So much. Thank you.